Hi, everyone, and welcome to Inside ADB AI. This time we are talking about how to ensure your success as a writer within a year. My name is Rebecca Matter, and I'm joined by Katie Yako. Hi, Katie. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, everybody. Hi, our and special Pam. guest. And Pam Foster. Hi, Pam. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Welcome welcome back. We also have three extra special guests today. Um, Candice Lazar is on the left-hand side, and they'll be jumping in a little bit later. But Candice was actually named our 10K Challenge winner this year, so that was very exciting at this past year's boot camp. Guillermo Rubio in the middle, who we lovingly call G internally here, was one of our first in-house writers way back in the day, has a great story that you're probably familiar with, but if not, definitely look up his case study. Um, but he has gone from knowing nothing about copy to living this exceptional life out now in California. And so he'll be jumping in with his story. And then finally, Christina Gillick, all the way over to the right, who I've had the pleasure of working with both from her very first article way back in the day in Wealthy Web Writer to now being one of my go-to copywriters and living her own successful life as well. So I'm looking forward to hearing from all three of those today. And our idea here is to give you not only our advice, you know, we meet with you monthly through Inside ADBI and we give you our insights, but to bring successful ADBI members in as well so that you can learn from people who are maybe just a little bit further down the path from you what, what they have done. You know, the, the journey to the writer's life is so different for every person, both because of where you come from and your past experience, as well as where you're going, what you want your writer's life to look like. I remember a long time ago, Christina was actually a reality blogger for one of our websites, and she was thinking that she had to make this goal of making six figures that year, because that's what everybody had done before her. And she called me and she said, I'm really struggling with this because I'm so happy. I'm making as much money as I was making at my full-time job, only I'm only working 20 hours a week. So I said, well, just stay there. That's okay. You don't have to actually uh, go for six figures. You can. The writer's life is whatever you want it to be. So set your goal of what you want and live the life that you want. And so she's here today to kind of share how that can happen for you as well. But our goals for this overall webinar, we just wanted to do a quick kind of review before we jump into the new year, you know, where the best paying assignments are and what clients are looking for in a new writer so that when you are out there in the new year and approaching your business, you really understand the opportunity and who you're talking to and what, what value you provide. We will talk about what to do in the coming year to ensure your success and share some stuff about what not to do. It's nice when we have that, uh, that learning curve uh, shortened up for us, right? We can live, we can, we can not do the things that people have done that have been, have created roadblocks or challenges for themselves. We get to avoid those pitfalls, so that's really cool. And then we'll close things out with just a quick four-step plan. So you're gonna get a lot of advice today, but if nothing else, there is a four-step do this just to ensure that you've taken the steps that you need to become a well-paid writer. So, Rebecca, let's one, one minute before you get in. I, this is just purely a coincidence, but Guillermo and Christina are 10K Challenge winners too. So you have oh my a, gosh, that's a so 30,000 <laughs> <Me too. laughs> panel here. Actually, anyway. me too, oh. said Pam. So oh, we got four Pam. of them on <laughs> Hey, now I kind of feel left out. I mean, what the thing? <laughs> Very cool. All right, so we've got $40,000 worth of winners on this webinar. Okay, so jumping back in, it's funny, because this is actually the third webinar we've done in the last few weeks, and this theme is coming up again and again. Just when, we, when we're, at the end of the year, we tend to do a lot of research, we start putting together our pricing guide for next year, which is where we research to see where the industry is going, where the opportunities are. And it is crazy. Like, there genuinely has never been a better time to be a writer than right now. The demand for good writers, you know, copywriters and content writers who understand persuasion is huge. If you just think about everything around you, when I started with 80 by 15 years ago, the opportunity was getting bigger because the web was becoming bigger. But now with social media and all of the channels and video and the ways, you know, video marketing was around for a long time, but there are a dozen different ways to use video. There's a dozen different ways to use email. Now. There's a dozen different ways to write content. It's so much. It's everywhere. And regardless of the industry that you are interested in or have experience in or want to break into, it's huge. You really, we were doing the numbers. These days you really only need a few clients. Because if you just think about the volume that every single company has to put out of copy and content just to sell their product or service, 
it's crazy. If I specialize in manufacturing widgets or I'm a dentist or a veterinarian or something else, that's what I do. That's my skill set. That's my strength. But in order to effectively market, to bring in new customers and keep the ones I have, I have to also be a publisher. I have to have a website and social media accounts and newsletters and emails and all of this stuff has to get written. But that's not what I do. That's not what I get paid to do. I get paid to take care of your sick animal. That's where I need to be, not running a publishing business. So these days, all of these professional service providers, all companies that sell products and services, which is really any business, right? You're only in business if you're selling something. They all need copywriters. It's millions and millions and millions of companies, 26 million professional service providers. All of them need you. So every business has an online presence today. Every business has to now be a publisher, and they have to put out all this new copy and content every single week, if not daily. So you are in the right place at the right time. And no matter what kind of writing you're interested in, long form, short form, videos, emails, blogging, search engine optimization, you like the techie stuff like pay-per-click, there's so much variety. Uh, there are no two writers that are the same. You know, we all have certain paths that we like, certain writing styles that we enjoy. But every writer can really create their own little world, their own little business of all these different things that they enjoy doing. And every client that you take on has the opportunity or potential to incorporate all of these different pieces of copy and content. So if you go to work for somebody and they don't have a newsletter, why not? You could introduce it. It's a whole new marketing channel for them. They're not on social media. You could do that. There's so much variety. And so really, whatever style of writing you enjoy, there's a place for you these days. And the fees, they aren't that bad either. We've got online sales there. We talk about this a lot, $2,000 to $15,000 plus royalties, complete websites, online content, again, newsletters, social media. Social media is great for those of you looking for predictable income. You know, if you are in a full-time job right now and you're looking to safely transition, um, Things like social media are great because you can have a predictable retainer every single month. The client pays you every month for the exact same service. Same thing with actually online content, e-newsletters. Clients typically will say, I want you to write one newsletter a month. I want you to write three newsletters a month, whatever it is. For that, I will pay you this. You do your work every month. The client pays you every month. Easy, right? It makes, it makes transitioning into this freelance world much feel, feel better and easier because you don't have to worry about where that income is coming from. So you've got lots of demand, great fees, and this is the coolest part. Trained online copywriters are valued more than ever before. And this is what I want to talk about before I hand it over to our guests. Because when it go, comes to going into the new year, you understand the opportunity, you understand the demand. Do you understand your value? And I really want to make sure that you're solid in that. Because when you go to approach clients, you have to have that confidence of knowing what you bring to the table. We have more writers come to us that are uncomfortable <laughs> asking for so much money. They'll say, you know, I really don't, I can't believe I'm going to ask you for $2,000 to write this case study. But that is what it is. Quality content, quality things matter. Companies don't want to just put up anything on their websites. They don't want to send out any email. It has to be well written. That represents them and the service and the quality that their customers are going to expect from them. It, it, it brings in the right people from the search engines. It allows people to want to connect on social media and to share that because they're recommending something that appears high quality and professional. So quality matters, and companies know this now. It's not about volume. It's about really good quality. In addition, more and more customers, your, your client's customers, are insisting on interacting with companies online. At AWI, we used to be you know, heavily phone. But it is way more interactive on email and social media now than ever before. People are actually wanting to be serviced as customers through social media channels. So your clients no longer have a choice. They have to have quality writers in these spaces to help them communicate with prospects and their clients. The competition is fierce for online attention. So all of the other stuff that's out there, look how many emails you're getting these days, how many blog posts are being written, how much stuff is in your social media feed. There's so much noise out there. Good writers understand how to get that attention. That's something we teach in all of our programs. How do you get someone's attention and then keep it, right? That's why quality copywriters are so valued these days. More money is being spent every year on digital advertising. That's a huge thing, not just because it shows that the industry is growing and the potential is big for you, but that we as marketers, we as business owners are putting more into the pot. 
we're exposing ourselves to more risk. And so therefore, we want to put quality copy and content out there. If I'm paying to have these Facebook ads up, if I'm paying to have traffic come in my website, I want to make sure that, that all that money that I'm putting into those channels is going to result in some kind of return, right? So that, that, in, that, that projection or that um, the, everybody contributing more money into digital marketing this year or, or allocating it, there's the word, allocating it to digital marketing is a good indicator that they are in it, businesses are doing very well, and they are willing to invest more in the marketing channels that yield these results, which is what you are servicing as writers. And finally, those clients need to see a return on their investment. They can't spend a bunch of money on ads and traffic only to have a bunch of people come to their website and then walk away without buying. So you have incredible value. You are the ones that help the bottom line. You're the ones without you, without the copy and content, no selling can be done unless they are strictly phone or door-to-door -door salesmen. But even then, most people have a website and or a brochure. So without you, their business doesn't, doesn't work. So your value is huge. And I want you to know that when you're going out and negotiating fees. Real quickly, where are they spending their money? Everybody wants to know this. It's everywhere. Email, I will say, is still <laughs> the number one darling of digital marketing. But everywhere, websites, social media, content marketing, videos, marketing funnels, everywhere, they are paying more and more money into every single channel than ever before. Um, we do have a copywriting pricing guide that you can download off of our website. It's free. And we're working on the new one. I believe the new one will be published the first week of January. So definitely stay tuned for that. But this copy guide actually goes over 75 different projects that you can take on as a copywriter and the types of fees that you can expect. Even if you just read it, I mean, it's a great resource, but just read through it and it will reset your brain into, oh my gosh, that's the value that I bring. That's what they're willing to pay. I think you'll be happily impressed. Okay, so what do clients look for in a writer? The ones that you're going out, when you're going to talk to clients, you know, know your value, but what are they looking for? They're looking for someone with a genuine interest. This is something that we talk about time and time again, and I hear more and more about. I love people who are genuinely enthusiastic. If you love ADBI, I want to talk to you. I want that person writing for me because it's going to come through in your writing when you have that genuine interest. We're looking for professionalism at every turn, every email, every call, every follow-up, every, every contact should be just professional, thinking about where that client is right now, how busy that they are, and just being professional, being mindful of their time. We love people with new ideas. I want writers who are coming to me all the time with, have we ever thought about this, or what about this, or well, I have an idea for this article, or I know we just did that promotion, but what if we did this one too? It gives you so much more opportunity to make so much more money, and it makes my job so much easier. If you have new ideas, that's great for me, the client, because I don't have to, one, come up with them, and two, you could come up with things that we've never even thought of, which is a win-win for both of us. Uh, Deadline-oriented, don't miss a deadline. Even if it's as simple as I'm planning to follow up with you or I'm planning to send my proposal in on Thursday, you send that proposal in on Thursday, if not Wednesday. Because even that first contact with a client, you're basically showing them how committed you are to meeting your deadlines. Uh, Guillermo, who's on this call, he never misses a deadline. I actually wrote him an email recently about doing an article for the writer's life on his writing process because I've never seen him miss a deadline. He's, I've never gotten an excuse. You've never gotten anything. It always comes in on time, and it's professional. You can tell that he has read it, reread it, edited it. It is solid when he hands it over. So be deadline-oriented. Be teachable. Even the best copywriters in the world um, are still willing to receive feedback. And so when your client is giving you feedback on your writing, it's not an adversarial thing. It's, it's a team. It's collaborative. We're working together to come up with the best possible promotion or whatever it is, which, again, is a win-win. It does better for the company and your client, and it does better for you, which you want, especially if you're making royalties. You want the best sales that are possible. So be open to being taught. You don't have to know everything and just in general. You want to be collaborative with your clients. Take what they know, too, about their business and, and use it. And then finally, if you happen to have industry background, always a good thing. I mean, it's, it's not a necessary thing, but at last this past year's boot camp, we hear more and more of people going into niches like Liz Farr. She was an AD grad member. She was a CPA, and now she's writing in the accounting space. She's writing for CPAs. She basically goes to them and says, I know exactly what you do. I am a CPA, and now I'm a copywriter, and I can help you sell your services. So if you have industry background, 
always a huge bonus as well. All right, Pam, I think I've pumped us up as far as the opportunity goes. Okay, <laughs> so now yep. I'm going to hand it over to you so that we can talk to our guests about advice for the coming year. Yep, and um, it's a total coincidence that the three guests are all 10K Challenge win winners. It's a great club to be part of. And um, what that means is, you know, each year we choose someone who has submitted amazing copy to us and we want to work with them further. So they're awarded the big prize 10K in contracts to work with us. And um, so one at a time, I want to talk with Candace Lazar. Let's start there. Um, hi, Candace. Hey, how are you? Um, great. How are you? Good, thanks. Excellent. Um, you've had quite a year. This has been probably your biggest year, if I'm not mistaken, and can you tell us a little bit about that? Definitely. Um, you know, the, the two major, major things that happened this year were, um, first of all, I uh, took on a, a retainer client, uh, Jeff Walker. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a, a permalance member of his team, so I'm freelance. Um, I am considered full-time, but full-time isn't like, you know, a 40-hour full-time job. Um, so I, I still work with other clients, which they're aware of, and uh, I think I kind of have the best of everything. Um, so that was that was really cool. He, he's like a dream client for me, and so to, to land that was unbelievable. And wow. then, uh, yeah, this past fall, winning the uh, AWAI 10K Challenge was a dream come true. So. Yay! So now, Yay. tell us very quickly, when did you start with AWAI? Uh, I, I discovered it the very last week of 2014, like between Christmas okay. and New Year's, I saw a banner ad and I went, okay, that's your thing you're doing in 2015. Okay, and so here we are, 2018, best year of your life, and you've got a, a huge gig with Jeff Walker, which most people would be, if you Google who he is, you'll be like, oh, wow, that's impressive. Um, and our 10K Challenge winner of the year. So you have worked really hard to get where you are, and based on that, uh, we wanted to hear your advice about what, what big things people can do and little things maybe to make 2019 their best year yet so far. Well, um, if you want to go over the, the specific things I have on these slides, I would have a little yep. bit to, to add to them. So first, oh, yeah, exactly. you know, craft, crafting your USP, I would say it's really helpful, and this is carrying off of what Rebecca was just talking about, um, you know, with Liz Farr, the, the former accountant, you know, it's, craft a USP based on your experience. Your experience may not be professional experience. If you don't want to work in your field where you're coming from professionally, you don't have to. It can be hobby experience. It can be something else. But craft a USP that somehow involves your experience because it's just going to be a lot easier for you that way. Um, and, and that's something that we I, have. Oh, sorry. Just in case we have some people on board who don't know what a USP is, can you describe that a bit, or what that means in as far sure. as becoming a copywriter? Yeah, your your USP, you know, your unique selling proposition is it really is answering the question, why you? What is special about you? Um, you know, it's a short statement. It's, you know, somewhat like an elevator pitch, not entirely, they're a little bit different, but it's, you know, what, what is it that you're bringing and how are you different than anybody else? How are you special? So, and I, I shied away from doing this at first and I, I wish in a way I didn't. And I, I would tell almost anyone, you know, my professional background is I'm, I'm a lawyer and I'm like, no, I, I really want to avoid law having to do with my copywriting. And then I later decided to, to sell that angle instead. And I tell people, and it's on my website, I'm a lawyer, I know how to deal with proof, and I'll help you make sure your copy has adequate proof. Uh -huh. So certainly that's a really good message rather than a really I want nothing to do with it message. So <laughs> okay. don't do what I did. Do it faster, for sure. Well, and I want to um, briefly pick up on one thing you said. It does not have to be your professional career. I know a lot of members who left, for example, um, a nursing career, and they're they're so tired of health and nursing and they don't want to do that anymore but in their other life they are a master gardener they love gardening it's in their blood they have to you know work in dirt and plant flowers and all that stuff so they're writing in the gardening market so really if you can pick something that resonates with you it, your clients are going to feel that from you and be really happy that you have that passion for their their industry couldn't agree more. Yeah, and that's I think that's a really great example. Yeah, is the gardening. You know, you could you could think about it too as 
what other characteristics have you learned from nursing that can apply to a different field? But, but yeah, the gardening, a, a different hobby, that sort of thing, exactly, because you have experience in that. And like mm -hmm. you said, the enthusiasm is going to come through as well. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's one of them. Uh, the second one that I, that I had suggested was to submit spec assignments. Um, I'm a big fan of spec assignments, and I, I actually think, especially in my earlier days, um, well, and even this year, truthfully, but my spec assignments have ultimately really paid me more than a lot of my paid assignments because of how the impact that they've had. Um, you know, there's a spec assignment that maybe you win it, great, I've won several specs. Um, I won an AWAI spec a few years ago that I think kind of put me for, you know, initially on, on the radar as, oh, you know, this is someone who does a decent job writing. Um, you know, there's so, other specs that you'll win and, yeah. Sorry, once again, just to make sure, uh, if, if there's anyone who's listening and who doesn't know what that term means, a spec assignment. Um, quickly, it's a, a, a lot of clients will put out something where they want to see what you've got before they hire you. So they put out something called a spec assignment where you can submit a headline or a lead or an article idea, blog post, and then if they like what they see, they'll hire you. So that's, that's just in short what a spec assignment is, and we at AWAI offer those all the time because we're looking for people who can write content for us. Okay, proceed. Sorry to interrupt, I just want to make sure everybody understands. Sure, sure. Sorry, I should have I should have thought to define it. Okay. Um, so you so you guys have offered them, and certainly other marketers that you work with offer them. And sometimes someone else might even just ask you. There might not be a, a spec assignment, you know, ever posted somewhere formally, but someone might ask you to do something for them on spec. And so you might actually win the assignment, and then you're getting paid, which is great. Um, but sometimes it can go for, well, and first of all, it might not even get that far, right? If nothing happens with your spec, you at least have a sample, you have the experience, you tried it, and, and that's not, I, I don't really think there's ever a, a downside to that. But mm -hmm. let's say you win it, great. Or let's say even further, you know, if someone else might know about it, it can just, it can have impact beyond that. I've had specs where I've submitted them and the person likes them and someone else comes along and asks them, hey, I'm looking for someone who's able to do so-and-so, can you recommend anyone? Oh yeah, you know, Candace can do that sort of thing, I've seen her work and I really like it. And so suddenly someone I don't know is aware of that spec assignment and contacting me and then that ends up turning into a project. So spec assignments can pay in a lot of ways that don't even seem at first that you would think about. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And then uh, my last one is to avoid shiny object syndrome. Um, I think most people have shiny object syndrome, but especially writers, and that's where there's so many different things we want to do, see, look at. Um, you know, if you're someone that tends to buy a lot of AWA programs or if you have Circle of Success and you've got, like, the, the library, it's really easy to kind of just, ooh, I want to look at that program. Ooh, I want to look at that program. Oh, they're promoting this one that week, and that sounds great. Don't do it. <laughs> do one at a time, focus on one. You know, if you need to change what you're doing based on an assignment, something you're doing for a client, sure, go go find what you need to find and do what you want to do. But if you've decided to work your way through a program, you know, set some kind of goal for yourself in terms of learning a skill, you know, figure out what you need to do to, to get that to happen and, and feel like, okay, I'm done working on that at the moment. I've, I've accomplished it to the point that I want to accomplish it before you move on to something else, because then you're just going to keep, you know, if you don't have a good attention span for these things, you're just going to keep moving on to the new thing and never really right. finishing the original thing. Yep, and that is an excellent point. And I think the thing is, decide what you want to do and then ignore the rest. So if, if you want to be a web mm -hmm. copywriter, learn that web copywriting skill. Ignore all the other stuff until you feel like, okay, I've finished this one program, now I've got the web foundation let me move on to emails or something like that. But I like your idea of one thing at a time, finish it, and then move on to the next. So try to do that if you can. Um, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you, Candice, and congratulations on your spectacular year. Here's to uh, a great you. 2019. Yes, thank you. All right. So we're going to move on now to Guillermo, my buddy G. Um, Guillermo, how you doing? Hey, Pam. Good. You? Great, great. Great to hear your voice. Um, Guillermo and his wife and I lived in the same town of Jacksonville for a while, so we used to get together a lot, and I miss him because now I'm in Maine, he's in California, but luckily <laughs> with things like this, we get to be together again here. Um, 
Guillermo's had quite an interesting journey. He started out with AWAI on staff as a copywriter, and then he really took off and went and worked in, just tell me in like one sentence your journey up to today. Um, in one sentence, uh, worked with <laughs> AWAI, mentored with Clayton Makepeace, and worked at Money Map Press under Jed Canny, and now I'm, uh, uh, again, working freelance. Wow, and so if you're new to this industry, Google those two names, Clayton Makepeace and Jed Canty, and you will know the superpower copywriting experience that uh, Guillermo has had working with those A-list top top, and Guillermo is no slouch himself. So um, so you would you say you've had a great year? Yeah, definitely. And you're, you're excited to be out on your own again? I am. I'm out here in California. It's actually raining, which is really nice for us. What? <laughs> you know, I've heard people are freaking out out there. Um, so I asked you about what your three tips would be if you were sitting down with a new member and they're like, ah, where do I begin? What's the advice to make 2019 my best year so far as a copywriter? And here are the three things you gave me. And um, go ahead and expand on those. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Sure. So, like, at least for me and, and a lot of writers I've spoken to at boot camp and stuff, I think, like, the one, the number one fear holding a lot of people back is just confidence in your writing skills, especially if you've never had a client before. And so my, my first tip would be to just get good at your craft. The, the best exercise for that is to simply write out letters by hand and just do that every day, maybe set a timer for an hour and, and, and just do it seven days a week and do it for about a month, and you'll just find that naturally um, – You'll start being being able to write copy. It just it just works uh, for one reason or another. Um, that was really helpful for me when I was first starting out, and I still do it sometimes uh, to this day, uh, from time to time. That's amazing. But I would say some people question it. They go, "Really, really? I'm going to sit down and rewrite something by hand? Really, ten times?" But you are a, a shining example of that making a difference. It, it really works. I don't I don't know why it works, but actually, not not typing it, but actually physically writing it on a piece of paper. Even though it can be tedious, uh, it really does work. It's probably one of the best exercises that uh, AWI um, advocates for in the accelerated program. Nice. Okay. How about number two? Oh, so okay. So that goes kind of back to uh, at least for me when I was starting out. And w w the other thing that uh, I felt like I needed to know everything before I went out to uh, get a client. So I, I wanted to be I wanted to know everything about everything there was about copywriting and direct response marketing, you know, just in the event that if a client asked me something, I would know the answer. And I quickly found out that that's really not necessary. It, it, it's um, again, it comes back to that lack of confidence in your, in your writing skills and the fear of maybe getting rejected or not writing something that your client won't like. But just know that it, you can get started right where you are. Chances are you know more about copywriting already than your clients do. And so even just through you knowing a bit more than them you can still be a value to them, and, and, and they're not looking for, for perfection. They're looking for people to help them, and a lot of the clients out there need the help just because they don't know copywriting. They don't know, like, the, the four U's, uh, for example. I don't know if people are familiar with, like, being unique, ultra-specific. Um, uh, I forgot the four U's. <laughs> Urgent, <laughs> Urgent and, uh, and uh, yeah. useful. <laughs> useful. <laughs> yeah, pop quiz there. Um, yep. but, but, yeah, like mo most of them don't know this stuff, the stuff that you're learning through AWAI and just through even like the articles, the, the free content that AWAI puts out. So don't wait till you're, till you're perfect. You don't have to feel perfect before you can go out and try to get your first client. And I just want to punctuate that about how clients don't know as much as we do. As we're learning copywriting, we're giving it our full focus. And Rebecca said and G said, you know, a lot of clients, they're busy running marketing departments or, you know, even a small business. They have no time to learn copywriting. I have been writing for my accountant for 20 years or so, his newsletter and his website. And when it was time to update the website a few years ago back, I said, you know, we're going to optimize each page. And he said to me, can you tell me what a page is again? <laughs> so, hello. <laughs> Our clients really don't know much at times. You know, some of the more sophisticated direct response companies will know a lot about it. But I'll tell you, if you're working for businesses that have websites and stuff that aren't in this very sophisticated direct response world, you are going to be their golden shepherd on how this all gets done. And so even if you just say, hey, you know, you need a headline that is a big promise to the reader, 
they're going to be like, oh, I never even knew that. You know, they just, they, they don't know. So you can go in there not being perfect, and you'll still be a major superhero. Just know Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And even with more sophisticated clients that are in the direct response business and do know copywriting, uh, even there, don't, don't be afraid just because, they're again, they're, they are busy. So even if they do know copywriting and can write copy, um, they just don't have the time for it or the, the, the focus to sit down and really think of a great big idea for a specific product or, or promotion. And that's where you can come in. Even if, even if you're not perfect, they can see the, if they see the germ of a great idea there, they'll work with you. They'll, they'll take the time and work with you just because they can see the potential there. So, yeah, just don't let that stop you and don't let that take – don't let that be – uh, turn into a waiting game where you're just keeping on waiting and waiting and waiting until you know more and more stuff. That's excellent. So. I love that point about the sophisticated marketers because I would think that would be a little more intimidating, and I like that you said, no, no, if you come in with a fresh idea, they're going to be excited to have you on board. So, excellent. cool. All righty, and then the third one? Oh, the third one. So this one can be scary, but putting yourself out there. So people need to know you're a copywriter. So any opportunity you get when you're talking with people don't be afraid to say that you're a copywriter, even if you've never been paid to do copy before. As long as you're actually writing out letters by hand and, and practicing and writing spec assignments, you, you can call yourself a copywriter. And so you'll find that just by mentioning things like that, um, you may find that assignments come your way from places you never expected. Just because once somebody understands what a copywriter is, is and, and what they do, they might be like, well, I need help with something, or I know somebody who might need help with something. So it's just... Um, not being afraid to just take action or, or even if somebody, if there's a client you want to write for and they don't have a spec assignment that, you know, a formalized spec assignment, you could still write a spec for them, just the headline and lead, maybe 500 words, and send it to them. Send a short email and say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd really love to work with you. And um, I was taking a look at product XYZ. I've gone ahead and written a headline and lead for you. Uh, be glad to talk it over with you. And you might be surprised at how many people will respond so long as you're like just putting yourself out there and coming leading with value. So I think if you aren't afraid to do that and kind of force yourself, if you are afraid to do that, um, you'll find that good things will happen more often than not. Yep. And, uh, you know, one place to do that very easily is on LinkedIn. If you put on your LinkedIn profile, I'm a copywriter in the such and such industry, and you have connections and you let them know, or if a company's looking for a copywriter in that such and such industry, they're going to find you when they search. So that's if one simple thing you can do is just take your LinkedIn profile and put yourself out there as a copywriter. And you'll be surprised what happens when people start seeing that and, and going, whoa, wait a minute, I need that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Guillermo, and uh, I really appreciate your time on this today. And stick around. We've got some uh, other uh, last words of advice we might ask you for. Sure. Um, now I'm going to move on to Christina Gillick. Hi, Christina. Hi, Pam. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I want to let everybody know just a couple of sentence background of where you started and where you are now and what kind of year you've had. Okay. Um, gosh, I'll try to keep it short. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> so I had a job I really liked, but, um, you know, I wasn't really looking for anything. And then my boss hired, um, you may have heard of him, an AWAI superstar, Joshua Boswell, uh, to do some copywriting and marketing. And so um, he came in, and I was like, this guy has an amazing lifestyle. I want what he has. And so he introduced me to AWAI, and that was um, late in 2009. So I got the accelerated course, and um, I had my first article published by Wealthy Web Writer in 2010, and then replaced my full-time income. Um, then I came to boot camp, and then I, so I was so afraid, like you know, to leave my job. So I just kept staying there, even though I'd replaced my full-time income. But then I came to boot camp, and I was like, wow, you know, I can do this. Like, look at all these other people who are doing this. Like, I can quit my job. And and so I came home, and then made the leap not very long after that. Um, and then I've been a freelancer. Since then, <laughs> that was, that was uh, August of 2012. Okay. And um, so what was this past year like for you? It was amazing. So, so I, um, I became my own client. I don't know how many people listening know, but I started another little side business. And so I started uh, working for other clients and then working for myself running that business as well. So both things have really taken off. So I divide my time between the two. Um, and both of them are going really well. So um, I don't know. I don't no, that's say. I'm all fired up. It's you yeah, know, Christmas yeah. season, and so it's a, <laughs> it's a retail business. So, you know, things are going quite well. 
Yay. And then um, with the clients, you know, building up royalties and all those things, that's going well. So happy, happy. Excellent. I highly recommend The Writer's Life. Yeah, it, it is a wonderful life. Um, all right, now you. When I asked you for three, uh, your top three words of advice, um, these are the ones you gave me. But I'd love you to expand on each one for the audience, if you may. Okay. So um, the first one, like I think this has been mentioned by pretty much everybody, but you know, just getting started. So when I when I first heard about the writer's life, I definitely wanted to do that, but I didn't want to have to talk to a client or you know any of that stuff. So I was really really afraid, and so I you know I was in the planning stage for a really long time, and like G mentioned, um, you know I used that excuse of needing to have everything perfect before I could you know reach out to anybody, and so finally that went on for a little while, um, and so finally I decided if I was ever going to actually live the writer's life, I have to do something. Thing. So I found the smallest possible thing I could do, and that was writing blog posts. And so, um, you know, I had, well, Wealthy Web Writer was my first um, client to publish my blog post. And so once I had one out there, it was like, okay, I didn't die. I can do another one. And so I did another one, and, you know, little by little, it got easier. And, you know, I got more confident because clients were like, oh, these are good. And, and so then other people started seeing those and coming. So, you know, just getting started. So whether you write articles for websites or you start your own website or blog or just anything you do to write more often and to get your name out there and get your writing in front of somebody um, is my first tip. Great. <laughs> I agree. It, it, people, you can wait and wait and have analysis paralysis for a long time and it doesn't get you anywhere. So just get going and start something. And um, I love that. I love that you started with something small like blogging and then built it into what you have today. That's great. All righty. Now, I haven't really heard of business journaling, so tell me about that. Okay. Well, um, so as Rebecca mentioned, I was a wealthy web writer reality blogger several years ago. And so having that role, um, you know, each month I would say, well, here's my big goal for the year. And um, I think it was the, the first year. I, I did it at least two years, maybe three, so I'd get my goals mixed up. But I think that first year was um, replacing my income. And so, and then, you know, the next year was doubling my income with working half as much. And then I don't remember. But anyway, so that first year was to leave my job, I believe. And so just the process of having to say, like, hey, all of the readers, um, you know, I'm going to do this thing this month to – you know, get closer to leaving my job, it actually kind of forced me to do it. So I was writing it down, and then, you know, each week I would have to review my goal and say, am I getting close to this? Because I'm going to have to report back to all these people, and they're going to, you know, judge me if I didn't achieve the goal or the task that I said that I would. And so just that process of keeping um, a journal and recording my goals and my progress and everything helped me stay on track and avoid shiny objects like Candace was talking about. And then um, also as a bonus to doing that, you know, all those lessons I learned along the way, like, you know, the four U's and stuff like that, as I kept track of learning those things, um, I always had a source of new ideas to propose to clients. You know, if I, if something happened with a client and I was like, oh, wow, that was a lesson I learned. I need to, you know, write this down. And then later I had something to either write about in the reality blog or propose to another client about, you know, a marketing tip or idea. And so just keeping that journal always kept the ideas flowing. And so that's my second one is just start keeping notes about your journey. And I did that in Evernote originally, but... I've become loyal to Trello now, but those are side notes. That's not important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Awesome. Um, and I love the third one, and I think it's so important because time can slip by, a week can slip by, we've binged something on television, but we haven't focused on our copywriting career. So your th talk about your third point here. Right, yes, exactly. Like you're saying, like, the time slipping by is the thing, you know. So even though this is very similar to, you know, getting started, it's, uh, you know, it's more about the daily action, you know. So rather than becoming overwhelmed with a big project or, you know, like Pam, like you just said, Pam, you know, just only practicing here and there and then letting days or weeks go by in between, um, by spreading out your big task into smaller daily actions, it makes them a lot easier to tackle. And then also just having that daily action, it helps you keep your excitement and momentum up as you're going. And so, you you know, you can look back over the week and say, wow, you know, I worked 15 minutes here and there, but look at this thing I accomplished. I was able to, you know, reach out to 20 potential clients. Where if you, you know, spent all week saying, well, on Saturday morning, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to reach out to 20 potential clients. And then Saturday morning comes and you're like, well, I'm really snuggly in my bed, and you know, maybe I'll just get up later, and then you just don't get it done, and your, you know, your excitement and momentum kind of is down. So that's yeah, my third tip: is big, just taking. A big, yeah. oh, sorry, I was going to say, if it's a big pile that you wait and it's a bigger thing like that, then you feel daunted when, you know, you could have just done one little chunk each day, and at the end, right? Of the like day, each day, you could email one client. Yeah. You know, okay. or two, or three. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Christina. Those are awesome sure. tips. Sure. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Stick around. Okay. 
myself because I was thinking she has to mute herself. <laughs> now, Katie and Rebecca and I also thought about, all right, what are our tips for this coming year? And um, I'll just quickly go through them because we also want to talk about the four steps you can take to get going. As soon as January 1 hits, you're ready to go. So uh, one thing that I know is Katie's favorite is write every day. Write something every day, a headline, a, an email, practice email. Like G said, practice writing letters that are already known winners. Write something every day. It'll get you in that habit and, and in that mindset. You, you know, even if you set a time each day, like every day from 8.30 to 9 in the morning, I'm going to spend a half an hour writing, just writing, turning off everything else. Boom, that's my time. And speaking of that, have a sacred writing space where you can shut the door and put a sign up and don't let anyone interrupt you. And Katie, jump in if you want to expand on any of these. Um, no, I, you know, I, I think you have heard from our uh, success panel here that these are all things that, that have become part of their, their daily practice as well, too. I love uh, Carlene Anglet Colt. She, when she was first starting and she had young kids, she would have a sign on her door: "Don't, do not disturb unless you are bleeding from the eyes." <laughs> I mean, like, that, that's and but 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 part of the sacred, and I, you know, we have that in quotes here, is not only does it send a signal to you that this is serious, this is real, but it also sends a message to the people in your world. And sacred writing space means, you know, turn, turning off the, the text, turning off your phone, turning off your email, letting people know, I'm writing from 9 to 11 or, you know, 8.30 to 9, like you said. It, it telegraphs your intention to be a professional. Wonderful. And do you want to talk about treating your writing career as a business? Because well, some of these are yours here. That same mindset is, you're, this isn't a hobby. If you're with us, you want to make money as a writer. And if you're making money as a writer, you're running a business. And you, you have to think in those terms. And I always, you know, tell, tell writers, you're the CEO of that business. Your job is to make your business profitable. So what do you need to do on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis to make that happen, to make your shareholders proud. And uh, you're the shareholders too. So it's, it's not sheepish like, oh, well, I dabble in writing. It's no, I am a copywriter. And you say it loud and proud and, and you let everybody know, you figure out, just like if you were running a business, you have to make some investments. So what resources do you need? What, uh, who do you need to connect with? Just like if you were running a business, you would want to know fellow business owners in your space. You would want colleagues. You would want to be part of uh, organizations that live and breathe your business. And you would have to make sales. You'd have to bring money in, and you'd have to do good professional work that uh, you're proud of, and that's going to make your clients come back for more. So. It's all in the the mindset that you have for yourself as well as uh, that you're projecting out to everyone around you. Yeah. Pam, you can talk about connecting with fellow writers because this yep. has been such a huge part of your success. It really has been. And before there was Facebook, I don't know, I'm dating myself now, but um, the first time I really was participating with AWI was in 2005, and I don't think Facebook existed, but we had live events online and we had live events in person, um, to training events, but it was also a place for networking with other copywriters. And it's funny because you think, well, as a copywriter, I'm going to be very much alone, solo, working on my own in my house very isolated, but actually with us, you are never isolated because we have communities galore. We have them on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and when we have live events, we and even this kind of an event, people can chat and talk to each other in the Q&A, and um, it's a connection that matters so much because 
we are all in the same boat. We're all working as copywriters and trying to work with clients and getting clients and celebrating our successes. And, and it's a great community that's super helpful from the A-listers on to the newbies. We have uh, a very warm and welcoming community. And it's like you've discovered your family or your peeps, you it's know. It's so supportive. I've, I've never been involved in anything like that. And Pam, you know, just thinking about it, I think part of the reason that there is that that paying it forward, that support, that cheering each other on is because there is just so much work. Right. It's not like you're taking work from somebody else. Chances are you want to develop this relationship so that you can pass on extra work to people. It's, yeah. it's hard for people that aren't in this world to really get that. This isn't cutthroat. It's not dog eat dog. You know, it's competitive in that you want your writing to be great and to get the best results, but it's not in the sense that there's a limited supply of jobs. Like right. see, there's only, you know, 10 jobs available. There's 10,000, there's 10 million, you know, whatever. It's, there, it's really an unending need. And I do think that that lowers the barriers and helps people reach out and be supportive. And, you know, once you get that feeling of abundance, you, you want to share it. Well, and not only that, but I think, too, I mean, and that's such a great point, because it's not competitive at all. There are a billion clients, and how many can you have in a year? Three, four, you know. So if you can form a buddy group or a peer group of other writers, you can actually help each other and all grow together as a result. You know, practicing headlines or what do I do when the client asks for a proposal? Just things like that. It's so nice to have other people who who have been who are in that same position and um, sharing with each other. That's that's what I've learned over the years. Um, another thing is to take advantage of everything AWAI has to offer. We have so many resources and many of them are free for you to, you know, try us out and, and dive in and see what it's all about and read case studies and articles. Check out our other presentations like this. You can learn a lot just from that. And then if you want to take a program, Go ahead and check it out, and you'll find out that it, it gives you everything you need to master a craft and get clients at the same time. So that's what we're all about. We want to help writers, every writer, succeed in whatever desire they have for the, the life they want, the type of writing they want, the type of clients they want, and the lifestyle they want. So that's why we're here, and we invite you to check it all out. And um, finally, Rebecca and I have this tip, uh, have a professional website that is focused on what your clients need. And when we say niche, we mean what industry are you going for or what type of companies do you want to work with? Because you really can't work for all of them. And it's impossible these days really to get found if you're a super generalist. So you want to definitely say, I am an accountant who writes for accounting, accounting uh, clients. Or we have a guy, Steve Maurer, M-A-U-R-E-R, -E if you want to look him up, he is a, it comes from the manufacturing world. His whole life he's been in manufacturing and now he writes business to business copy for those kinds of clients. And he's the real deal. He says, I can write for your company uh, prospects because I am one. I have bought those products. I know how it all goes. And so something like that, if you say that on your website, like I, I have worked for veterinary companies for years and now um, I write for veterinary clients. I put that background right there and they're like, ah, oh, that's the writer for us. She gets our market. So that's what you really want to do, LinkedIn and, and your website, to clearly state what you offer so that when people go searching online, copywriter for the veterinary industry, they'll find me. And if it's for uh, industrial safety or B2B, they'll find Steve. So make sure you're doing that because that's huge. That will bring people to you and the chasing gets uh, less of a, a task for you. Um, all right, now I'm going to pass the ball to Katie and she's gonna Thank wrap you. us up with these amazing things you can do going forward. Yes, and get started right away. That's, that's the big thing. You know, I, I just wanna stress what Guillermo and Christina and Candace all said. You don't have to be perfect. You're never going to be perfect. So just take that off off the plate. That's that's not going to happen. You know enough. You're going to know more a year from now. But for right now, as soon as you get started, it's it's really on the job training. So so 
So don't wait. There's, there's never a time when you're done. Um, and I do want to point out that really it starts with an understanding of the role of the copywriter within the business, within this whole economy, within the whole world, and the, the importance and the value. And understanding that if you've been trained by AWAI, if, if you understand how to help businesses get their messages out, how to connect with their prospects, their customers, how to help them build their relationships and build their businesses, help them be more profitable, you are bringing a tremendous value to the equation. Like Rebecca said, this isn't an adversarial role. That's another thing that people get a little hung up on or that they can't quite understand. It's like the clients are the bad guys and you got to, you know, you got to beat them at this and this. No, but the, it's a team. It's very collaborative. And the reason that is the case is because everybody wants the, end, the same end result. Everybody wants a successful letter. And marketers, clients understand the more they help you, the, the, the better the end result will be. And copywriters who are really successful understand the more they bring to the table, the more successful it would be. So this, the link here will be live when this is posted, it was a, a Inside AWAI we did not too long ago. And it's called How to Make Good Money with Freelance Writing in Nine Easy Steps. And it really walks you through what the opportunity is and how all the different ways companies value and need copywriting, much like what Rebecca touched on, on earlier. So I, I highly recommend that. But this is part of this whole mindset that, that I talked about just a little bit earlier, the, the value that you bring and the importance you are, the, the role of the copywriter is in the, the whole scheme of a company's profitability and success. Guillermo touched, well, all three of our special guests, and, and Pam, Pam is the uh, head of AWAI's training, so, and, and the reason she is so great in that role is because of her background and her experience starting as a newbie and, and being as successful as she's been, and it's all been because of the training that all of these, uh, these folks have had. And you want to focus in on the most in-demand projects. Now, first of all, we, we recommend that everybody start with the accelerated program for six-figure copywriting. That's your foundation. That gives you the basics to be able to then move into any kind of content writing or sales writing, but you, you want to hone in on what interests you most. Maybe you like telling stories, so case studies would be good for you. Maybe you like long, um, in-depth research and, and, you know, what happens in the financial word, world, and, and you, you like the whole idea of long-form sales letters. Then, then that's what you need to focus your training on. There's, there's so many different ways to, um, to utilize and maximize the, the skill of persuasive writing. And we encourage you to explore as many of these options as, as you can. And then once you get excited, if it's email writing, you know, what, whatever it is, really hone in on that and um, get the specialized training beyond the once you, once you have your foundation in place. Third step, Pam just touched on this, pick a niche. It really does give you a, a tremendous advantage. It, it, it narrows the, the universe of all the companies that are looking for you and that you are looking for, and it gives you an area to develop even further expertise and to be recognized 
as an expert. So here's uh, an inside AWAI that we did. The number one easiest way to choose a copywriting niche and start attracting clients. Pam has a fantastic program about picking a niche as well um, that you can do over a weekend. And it's fun. And it's, uh, it's so remarkable how you can really narrow in and just set yourself up for success. So that's step number three. And then the final step for, that we'd like to talk about today is Moving into that, that business mindset and, and putting the plan together to attract the clients that you want to write for. You know, another misconception that we hear from some new writers is, oh, well, you know, what if I get a client that I don't believe in their product or I don't believe in how they do business or I don't want to work for? Am I, you know, am I stuck if I, if I, if I don't want to do it? Is, do I have other choices? We want you to be driving that train, driving that bus. You put together a plan to attract the clients that you want, and we help you do that. We have so much information, so many resources, and so much of that has come from our successful members like Candace and Guillermo and Christina and Pam and how they've done it and how that translates for you. And like I said, they're so happy to share what's worked for them. And plus all the other experts that weigh in on this, because we know that you come to AWAI not just for learning skills and developing your, your writing chops, but it's to start earning a living and uh, creating your version of the writer's life. And that means you do need a plan for attracting the, the best and the right clients for you. So here are just three resources that are available to you. These are the past Inside AWAI's uh, webinars. This, I love this one, this 26 ways to find freelance writing clients. We've got something for you if you're an introvert, if you're an extrovert, if you're anywhere in between, you can you can do three, four, five, you know, you can try some one month, try another in, a next month. You're going to land on what some strategies that work for you. And like Pam was saying, you don't need all that many clients because the clients that you do end up with are going to keep you busy. They're going to need more and more and more, which is, is this wonderful snowball effect that happens. Uh, another one was five ways to get clients to come to you. So we give you strategies for attracting and uh, telegraph, you know, signaling to the the clients that you want to write for that that you're available and uh, have them approach you, which is which is always fun. And then the whole relationship part and understanding how the the, the process works from the time you reach out to somebody to the time they say, yes, let's hire, and then what happens? We re reveal, you know, we lift the curtains on that in, in ways that make it approachable, take the scariness out of it. Um, you know, we, we love to do those kind of simulations and, and really walk you through that that process. So I, I highly recommend you check those out. And you know, Rebecca, Pam, any closing advice? I want to just say, I, you know, I'm excited that you're here. I know you want this, and we just want to help you do it. So, so, so let us help you. If you have any reasons that you think now's not the time for you or that you can't do this, you know, talk about it with, with somebody on in member services or you can send the three of us an email because I bet there's just, uh, you know, something that's, that's holding you back that we can help you overcome. And because there really isn't a better time to embrace this life and really jump in and, you know, end up like uh, Christina, Candace, and, and Guillermo. But, um, 
Rebecca, Pam, anything else for you from you guys? Well, I was just going to say that if Candace, uh, Christina, and G have anything too, they're welcome to chime in. Um, no, I, I mean just go for it. It, it. We have so much there for you. Um, I, there's no reason to not dive in if you really want this. And um, that's pretty much my advice is to go for it and start exploring. And we've got all kinds of things on um, our website, especially in Inside AWI, we have a blueprint. So if you're like, okay, but where do I start? Because this is so exciting. You know, check out the blueprint in our Inside AWI page and that's where you begin. You can see what the possibilities are and how to go for them. And then you'll start to be able to develop a plan for yourself. Anybody so else? Other old my only other input is just to not get stuck. This is Rebecca. You know, make sure that you're taking action every single day. And if you find yourself, you know, paralyzed by so many opportunities, or you hit a roadblock, or even hit an opportunity that you're not sure how to take advantage of, reach out. Whether you reach out to our member services team, you email us, you go into the Facebook group, our LinkedIn groups, and ask. You'll, you're part of this incredible community. Just like Candace, Christina, and G being here today, they're so, unlike any other industry or group that I've ever seen or belong to, it's such a collaborative, helpful, and generous community. Everybody wants everybody to succeed, and they are willing to help you navigate this world. It's so big. The opportunity is incredibly large. So there's lots of different ways that you can go about it. So my only advice is if you feel like you are at a place where you're kind of spinning or you get stuck or you hit a roadblock or, again, you, you hit an opportunity and you can't take advantage of it, reach out. If there's a way for us to help you, we want to help. So definitely ask us, ask your fellow ADGRI members, and keep on moving. Excellent. Anything else? Okay. Uh, and good. do we have any? Okay, great. And uh, I'm going to just do a, a last call for questions. Um, I'm glad, Kimberly, I'm glad you asked this question. Um, Kimberly asked, how important is it to know AP style, which is uh, Associated Press, and what's the best way to learn it? You know, honestly, it's, it's not that important in this type of writing. What's really important is knowing how to write conversationally. You're talking to one person that you care about, offering a solution to a problem that they have. So there's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to all the English teachers that, that may be listening, but <laughs> there, there's a lot of wiggle room here as far as grammar and as far as, you know, sen sentence structures. It, it's really important that you just convey a genuine sense of, of caring, and, so, and sometimes that doesn't necessarily fall into 100% perfect uh, grammar and all. The one thing is, is you don't want typos. You don't want, you know, you, you don't want to make obvious mistakes. You don't want anything that you send in to appear sloppy. So, you know, that, that, that is important. And, but, you know, there's proofreaders for that. And we also have Jade here helping with the Q&A. So you might see her chime in as well. Jade Trueblood from our events team is also awesome at answering questions. <laughs> so let's see. Let's just take a look. Um, oh, I love this. Ingrid's going to uh, take these sessions as a weekly replay to get and stay more proactive. I think that's a great idea. And, and plus, we have, it's over 30, I believe, inside AWAIs on that page where you go to sign up for this. And we really do deep dives into the questions we hear the most, the things that we hear from you that you want to know more about. So. You know, maybe instead of listening to this one repeatedly, which I, th I you know, I think you'll definitely get value out of, uh, I would rotate in the other ones as well. And I think if you listen to one a day for a month, I mean, that would be amazing. If you did one a week for 30 weeks, that would be amazing. What, whatever it is that you can handle uh, time-wise and works with your life, I highly recommend it because there's really uh, great, great insights and strategies packed into these inside AWAI. We love doing them. And, and the Q&A is really fun, too, and you learn a lot by the questions others are asking. 
I have a question here from Hudson. He says he's writing every day and has a blog, and he's found someone to help him get his website up and running. He's still struggling with landing the first client. How do I do it? Well, this is the perfect um, place to tell you we've got several free presentations on exactly how to land your first client, how to get clients to come to you, all kinds of tips. 26 Ways is one of our sessions, and they're all on that Inside AWAI page. Um, I'll put the link in my answer to you, uh, but if, just even if you go to awai.com and type in in the search box inside AWAI, you'll find the page where we have all of those topics. And you can scroll through. There's a whole getting clients section with several, I don't know, almost a dozen different topics or, I mean, presentations on that. So um, uh, bear with me while I find that specific one on getting your first client. And I'll, I'll put that link there for you. And while I'm doing that, maybe Katie wants to tackle another question. Sure. Russ is asking, is there a specific location to find spec assignments on the AWAI website? <clears throat> you know, it's, specs are generally part of specific programs. So, for instance, if uh, you're part of um, the uh, accelerated program, there's some specs in there that you do, uh, and, and they're – linked more directly if you're part of the writing for the health market or writing for the financial market. So that's where you can certainly find specs because your the, the spec is geared towards or connected to somehow the, the topics that's being covered. Um, of course, job fair, if you come to boot camp, there's you know, it's usually 30 to 40 specs available. Well, actually more because there's a lot of AWAI specs. If you go to the 10K challenge page, which we will uh, put the, the link up right there, if you go to our website and, and uh, search under 10K, um, but like I said, as soon as I'm done talking, I'll put that link up, you'll find information about writing specs for, for AWAI. Uh, we're always looking for articles. We're looking for ideas. Uh, as well as sales letter ideas. So basically, we're an open book as far as uh, being able to submit specs to us. It, it doesn't have to be one specific assignment that we give you. If you have any ideas about any programs that you're excited about, any information for articles that you think would be useful or, or helpful, go ahead and submit it. And the Submission instructions are on that page, but you know there there are some specific programs that have specific specs associated with them. So I hope that answers your question. And I'm going to go grab and go and grab that 10K challenge link, and I'll put that up as well. All right, and I'll grab another question. Um, Candace says she's new, um, taking accelerated copywriting, which is awesome. Good for you. Um, and she'd like to know what you think the top three skills are for today's copywriters. Uh, I assume you mean uh, types of copywriting, but maybe not. So I'm going to give you my top three types of copywriting skills and then my top three skills in general. The, so learning persuasive conversational copywriting is number one because if you're not able to connect with the prospect, it doesn't matter what you're writing, an email, a blog post, uh, a web page, you have to connect. And so you're doing the right thing by taking the accelerated program first because that really is the foundation of learning how to do persuasive copywriting that drives someone to action, that solves a problem where they go, oh my gosh, finally, I've found the answer to my needs, and then brings them to order it or, you know, or take whatever action it is you want. So that's number one, that, that persuasive conversational com, uh, copywriting that connects with a prospect. You can apply that to everything. Um, now, the second thing I know is it depends on what your interest is. If you want to write long-form direct response sales letters, for example, that is a certain skill set you'll want to master. And so the accelerated program, again, is a great place to do that. If you want to become a web copywriter and write websites for clients, that's a different skill set. 
it still uses those same foundational things you'll learn in the accelerator program, but um, it, there's a there's a different nuance to writing web pages, and so you'll want to study web copywriting, and we have programs on that. So those would be um, my my answer. That's my answer to the skill set part or any kind of specialty. Uh, it, actually, if if you want to be a master at it got to go after that and blogging is really hot now a lot of clients need blog posts and articles on their website to keep bringing in prospects I mean there's so many different projects um, that I, I just maybe that's the, I, my answer is only two <laughs> learn persuasive copywriting and the foundation of connecting with prospects and then pick whatever focus you want and and master that um, but also you need discipline skills in a way. You need to set yourself up every day to keep moving forward and doing things that that get you to where you want to be. And third, you need some business skills. You need to make sure that you're polishing up your LinkedIn profile, creating a website that brings clients to you. So um, those basics are just as important as the writing because you're going to be running a freelance business, really. Um, so. We have a lot of information again on our Inside AWAI website on how to do all those things, but uh, that's my answer. And Katie, I don't know if you have any other. No, I I, I think that's that's a great answer. Um, Carmen is asking, how many times is too many to follow up on a lead? And my response was, until they tell you no. But you know, of course, you have to be professional and and courteous. And I think a key to follow up is there. Are, it does need to. It helps if there's a reason for you reaching out again, other than just you know give me give me a job, give me a job. Not that that's what you would say, but <laughs> I think it's always a good practice to uh, include something of interest of use to the person that you're writing out with. Oh, hey, by the way, I saw this article about this you know new. Um, Antioxidant that I thought I thought would be of interest to you and, and your readers. Just want you know, one to pass this along. Oh, and you know, and by the way, uh, you know, I, I I did send in a uh, an idea for you. Uh, you know, any any movement there yet, or you know, are you ready to get started? I mean, I mean that's not coffee, what I'm saying, but but that that general idea. Pam, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, sometimes not hearing from a client is it has nothing to do with you. It's really that they're super busy. And we've heard many times of people who submit a spec assignment or an idea and they don't hear back for a couple months. And then suddenly when the marketer has a new promotion and they go, oh, I remember Carmen sent in that idea. This would be a good time to use that. So now I'll get back to her. So that's the thing. It's almost like um, it's a balance between understanding that they're busy and also gently going in and saying, hey, remember me? Uh, it's a real balance because it's not like you're being um, ignored on purpose. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to say is it, a lot of times clients are just really, really busy, and so they may not get back to you in a while. Hopefully that helps. Great. Um, let's see. Oh. Uh, who wrote this? I can't oh, see. I have an idea on the oh, one. Al, Al N wrote, uh, what is the most time-consuming aspect of writing? Is it research or writing itself or something else? Uh, you know, I think the thinking about, which is part of the research and part of the writing, it's, it is the work you do before you sit down to write that is going to make you a more efficient writer. Uh, I think it depends on how familiar you are with the topic, how complex the idea is. But um, the, the hope is, is that the research, as you know, you're taking notes, you're, you're organizing your research in a way that it's going to make the whole writing process easier. But you definitely should spend, a, you know, a good portion of your time before you even sit down to write, thinking about the product, thinking about the prospect, getting to know the product inside and out, you should know it is better than, you know, anybody. And um, then researching current events, researching as deep into the idea, topic, product that you can, and then start writing. 
We have a, uh, I'm sorry, um, I'm typing and thinking at the same time because I wanted to answer a question about B2B that Becca, Becky asked. Um, so the question is, I'm drawn to B2B, but my background is personal development, massage therapy, and health, nutrition, fitness, coaching. I haven't found anything yet that shows that I can combine the two. Do you have any advice? Well, yes, I have advice <laughs> because you can combine the two. First of all, um, there's a whole industry for those things. Like uh, I work in, in the veterinary world, and when you think about veterinary practitioners, they belong to associations. And every year they have to get certified, so they go to conferences, and they read trade journals. So you could be writing for organizations, events, journals, um, anything else that sells to that market. So that sells to your massage therapists and health practitioners. Um, oh my gosh, the medical B2B world is massive when you think of devices, equipment, um, software, for, uh, lotions, um, gosh, massage therapists, they have to buy tables and, you know, all the stuff, all the suppliers to those people, that's a huge market. So I would take a look at um, trade associations in those fields, like, you know, Massage Therapist Trade Association, and see who's there. There are people advertising and sponsoring events and running um, other events, like uh, annual conferences that people flock to if they're in that market. I mean, I, I, I again, use the pet world as analogies because that's where I work, but there's a whole association for pet groomers, and every year they have a pet grooming show, and all the pet groomers in the world show up at this show, and there's new equipment and new techniques and um, ideas for marketing for them. So uh, open your thoughts to who is supplying or supporting that industry, and that's your B2B market. Great. Okay. Oh boy, Alexis, this is a, this is well. Luckily, we have done plenty of inside AWAIs on this one. But where do I find actual clients, and what steps can I take now to make money fairly quickly? Well, I'm going to paste the link in here, which is your blueprint for becoming a well-paid writer. This was a um, an AWAI we did not too long ago, and it really will walk you through all all those steps. Uh, and plus, check out the other ones, too. Uh, you know, we, we know that this is a, a huge and important topic, so we cover it every every which way we possibly can. But, you know, first of all, I, I would say you do need to be sure that you have the skills. So if you haven't taken the accelerated program yet, I would start with that. Then basically you hone in on a niche or a project type, and then you approach them with, your persuasive writing skills and ideas that will help them uh, grow their business. You can start with content, meaning articles or blog posts or things like that, or sales efforts, emails, sales letters, catalog copy. But uh, it, it's hard to give you a, a little thumbnail answer, a, qu a quick answer, uh, but just know that there, we have so many resources available for you to dig into. Yeah, I see okay. a question from Jim uh, in the write every day part. What would I write? Uh, well, boy, um, <laughs> that's a loaded question because there's so much you can write. You can um, follow a program and write the exercises that are in the program, like our accelerated program for six-figure copywriting. Um, you can also go on our website and search for writing prompts. We have writing prompt videos. And if you watch a writing prompt video, it gives you uh, an idea of what to write about. You could also copy sales letters that you see or emails that you see coming across that really resonate with you. Um, again, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, Guillermo was a huge believer in handwriting, hand copying things that work well. And so you get into that routine and that rhythm and understand the flow. So there are all kinds of you know, there's, there are articles on our website, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles. And if you wanted to come up with an idea for an article that's along those lines, take a look at our articles and go, oh, I could write something like that. There's another idea for what you can write. So hopefully that gives you Great. some thought. <laughs> Good. Um, 
Let's see. I, I'm 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 in the writing and trying to think. <laughs> uh, these are okay. Oh yeah. So, okay. Want me to answer another one? Um, well, no, because I want to be sure I get this one. Um, okay. I don't want to lose it. They're kind of jumping around. So, guys, I'm over and prioritize, right? Me too. That's where I should be. Okay. So, Wendy's asking, I'm attending my first boot camp this May. Will the companies at Job Fair offer spec assignments there or before, or how will this work? Also, will there be B2B, B2B spec opportunities? Well, first of all, fantastic that you're coming to Job uh, to boot camp. You're going to love it. And we try to make as many of the specs available before boot camp even starts as possible. We like to open the job fair about a month or so before on a, a page on your on your member site where um, where you have access to them. And not all the companies are are they're, you know they're so busy that not everybody gets us on the deadlines that we want. But I would say probably. 95% do have it posted before you even get there. So you have time to do research. You have time to work on it. However, I don't encourage you to actually do the spec until you get to boot camp because you're going to just learn so much and you will have conversations that could influence it. You might even meet the marketer and get a whole new idea or a whole new take. So this is really just to prepare you to be ready to do the spec. And as far as B2B specs, you know, we we don't have a whole lot. We're, we're always looking to find more. There, there will be a few, but I would say percentage-wise, it's probably about 10% now, but we're going to work hard on upping that percentage. But what is great is there are always uh, some of our B2B experts there, and they're just wonderful sources of information and insights and uh, uh, strategies for where to get get the uh, the leads that that you need and the the companies that hire you. Uh, Jim was asking us to explain B two B a little bit, um, so happy to do that. B two B is business to business, and that basically means companies selling products and services to other companies or businesses. So they're not selling directly to consumers. Um, an example might be um, if you run a retail shop, you might buy your software to run the cash register and all that from another company that makes software for retail businesses. So that's business to business. They would make software specifically for retailers. Like a consumer would not buy that software. Um, another example is um, we have a, a, a member who's very active named Steve Maurer, and he works in industrial manufacturing. And they have um, they make parts for other companies to use when building equipment. So um, any kind of widgets that go in equipment, you know, think of a washing machine, all the pieces and parts that go into that. There are companies, manufacturing companies, that make all those pieces and parts to then sell to the manufact. I mean, the washing machine company. So that has nothing to do with consumers. That's all business to business. There are also shipping companies software companies, training companies, a lot of, uh, there's a whole world, and if you Google things like what is business to business, you can get a better understanding. But all of those suppliers have to sell product to their customers, other businesses. So they have to use all kinds of marketing methods, websites and, and brochures and case studies and all kinds of things to reach those customers. Um, and we have a lot of free articles on that too on our website. But hopefully that helps you. Okay, I can tell. Okay. Katie's typing. <laughs> yes, yes, and um, I guess I'll just answer this. Uh, keep jumping around on me. Um, okay. Oh, uh, Carla's asking, due to the many available opportunities, is it better to specialize or freelance? Well, there's there's two separate things going on here. It would be either specialize or generalize, and I believe it's better to specialize. Uh, it just gives you a little bit extra expertise. It narrows your choices. It 
you're in the world, so you're not having to relearn every time. Um, Pam, I, I, I'm pretty sure you feel the same way. Yeah, I, I mean, it's there are tons of opportunities, and it's there's never been a better time to be a writer, honestly, because of that, but it can be overwhelming. So if you have background in a specific industry, for example, um, it would be great to specialize as a writer in that industry. And then you decide, do I want to be a freelancer, you know, running my own business from home, or do I want to go work for a company as a staff uh, writer in-house? I mean, that's what you could choose to do because there are lots of jobs posted for full-time staff copywriters. And so, um, the, yeah, like, like uh, Katie said, those are two distinct things, specializing and... Really? Yeah, so so it's either specialist or generalist or freelancer or staff writer. Those those are kind of the the, the lanes where you where you have choices, and you, you know, and you don't have to, you know, be locked into one. You can you can change. Pam has been a staff writer. She's been a freelancer. She's been a, a contractor. You know, you as your career evolves and the opportunities present themselves, you have that flexibility, which is great. In addition to specializing in just a specific niche or area, you could also specialize in, in a writing type, such as email or white papers or case studies. Uh, you know, those are other options for you as well. And again, we have some really fantastic inside AWAIs that, that speak to that and that can help you out. Okay, what is the best way to gain credibility in a niche you don't really have experience in, and how do you approach clients? This is a great question. Um, I would ask you, first of all, why in your gut would you be going after an, an industry that you have no background in? And if you have a strong reason, then um, learn all you can. Become the biggest, world's biggest gobbler up of information on that industry. For example, um, you know, if you have never been a gardener, I'm just making this up, but you want to write for the gardening industry because you love it, um, start doing gardening. Start reading gardening magazines. Start uh, joining trade associations and seeing what they talk about online and in their conferences. Start, you know, really immersing yourself in that world. Having said that, it sure is a lot easier to start your business or your, your career in an area where you know something about it. Because that experience and knowledge and, and um, if you are the customer, for example, if you are a gardener already and you want to write for the gardening industry, the client's going to go, hey, perfect, right? Like instant match. If you're not a gardener and you want to write for that industry, you're going to have to work harder to win them over. And it's not impossible, but I would say the easier route is why not go start where you have a background or knowledge or, or experience because it just makes your life easier. So that's how I answer that one. <laughs> Great. Oh, guys, these questions are really making me batty here. Somebody was asking about how to jump into B2B. Oh, here, I see Jade answer that, but I want to give him another answer as well. But it's not letting me. There we go. Okay, that was a free webinar. We did an Inside AWAI on the B2B opportunity. Okay, Amy, Amy is saying, oops. Like, oh, so Jim, right, like 40 plus years of small craft boating, which that's the experience Jim has. I mean, that makes you an, an, an expert in there. You, not only are you a, a, a consumer of those products, you know, you are right in, in that world. And you could probably, you definitely could speak to small craft voters in a way that somebody that has never done that or doesn't live that life or doesn't have that passion can do. So use that experience when you're, if you are approaching a client in that world, be sure that you're using the jargon, the language, that shows that you actually have this experience, you know what you're talking about. I actually saw a, a job posting last year, I think it was on simplyhired.com, a, a boating magazine 
was looking for a copywriter with boating a boating background and the knowledge of the gear and um, what boaters care about and all of this stuff. So I'm like, wow, that'd be perfect for you. <laughs> but uh, yes, they that really, is funny. I know. And clients really, really are looking. Like if you go to a job site such as Simply Hired or Indeed.com, you're going to see that clients are looking for someone with a background in their market. So that again, that's why, like I, we always say, you know, make it easy on yourself. Start with what you know and what you what you come from. What, what do you bring to the table? What, and whether it's a personal hobby, like I'm a dog owner, and so I love writing for the dog industry. But even if I wasn't, um, my background is in. I have a lot of different jobs I've had in the past, but one of them was in banking. So let's say, all right, well, I understand banking. I could go work in the banking industry. So. I, it it takes something you know about, and all of a sudden the, the the clarity is like la. I had someone call me, and she said, you know, I'm struggling picking out an industry. And I said, well, what do you love to do? Well, I love camping. I was like, okay, is there a camping industry? Like, are there camping products that get sold? Are there campgrounds? Are there RV centers? And she just went, ah, oh, I love it. That's totally what I want to do. So think about it, you know, that way. <laughs> Um, okay. okay. Oh boy, lots of. Danica, I wanted to answer her question about finding clients yeah. now. I think doing Joshua Boswell's program, you know, he guarantees that you'll find a client. So that is really focus on that for now. Okay, just yeah. focus on that. You you do need to hone in and um, figure out a, a a plan that makes sense for your life where you're giving each thing the the time and energy that, that it needs. You know, we're not going anywhere. All all of the, the programs that you have with us, they'll be here when you're ready. But if getting clients is your highest priority right now, then I would give your best time and attention to that and um, and then layer on anything else. Yeah, and if you, David if, is saying that he, oh, sorry, he doesn't sorry. have any experience in any industry, but David, I'm – Sure, you have interests or hobbies or things that you're um, excited about or companies that you buy from. You know, these are all ways of parlaying that into a, a writing career. So think about it in in those terms. You know, what are the the websites that you go to the most? Where what are the where do you go to to buy things online? You know, where wherever there's commerce happening, somebody else asked, is there a need for writers in the fashion industry? I mean, yes, 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 yes and yes. <laughs> wherever there's commerce happening, copywriters are involved. Wherever people are building a community of customers, of products, of like-minded people, where people are consuming information, those, that's all done by copywriters. So I think once you have that filter, once you're looking through that lens, you're going to see opportunities everywhere. You know, we think about the newsletters that you get online and, and offline. Think about the websites that you go to. Think about, you know, it, when you make a purchase, how many emails do you get? How, ma how many additional sales? How, you know, how do they work to keep your business? That's all done by a copywriter and, and companies need more and more of that. I'm sorry, I'm typing an answer here because <laughs> it's a very specific question, so. Okay. Um, uh, easy as saying, uh, it seems that the writing jobs posted on AWAI writing jobs, so that must be direct response jobs, require at least one or two years or more of AWAI certified writing. Well, yeah, it's true. Writers, you know, marketers that come to us do expect the, our writers you know, the, the writers to have the foundation that we teach. Um, brand new freelancer. You know, I would work to get, get the skills. And uh, you can start approaching clients, but if, if you don't have that basic understanding of, of persuasive writing, then, it, you know, they'll probably go with, with somebody that does. And, and I know that's like, well, chicken or egg, how do I get the experience if I don't have experience? Um, 
again, it starts with, with laying the foundation, building on that foundation. There's writing assignments in most of our programs. You know, you can start using those as samples. People want to be able to see that, A, you can write in a engaging and compelling way and that you understand the structure, kind of what has to happen when. So, and in order to do that, you, you do need some training. It's not just, you can't just knock on somebody's door and, you know, that, that's not fair to you or it's not fair to them. Sorry, typing again. <laughs> uh, um, so I, I'm not able to type or scroll at this moment. Uh-oh, okay. Um, I still can. Let's see. So um, That's all my question, questions, Katie, by the way. I'm not sure how you want to answer this, but going through the accelerated writing program for a second time to get that certification, you know, the AWI verified, I'm having a difficult time creating a writing workflow for the wealth of information. What are your writing workflow for a homepage or a blog? Um, I'll try to answer this too, and Katie, if you want to start. But usually, if you study the, the models of what other people have written, like if you look at really good blogs or you look at website homepages, I mean, look at how they're set up. So. A web page will have a headline and then maybe a subhead and then maybe a little intro sentence or a few bullets and then maybe a call to action or um, a blog post would have a strong title and then an intro se uh, sentence. And if it's one something called a listicle, like 20 ways to do blah, 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 then it would be the intro and then the 20 ways spelled out, way one, way two, way three. So if you look at models of um, things that are out there, you can just copy that as a framework. I mean, that would be how I would approach something and how I have. Like, let's say, um, you know, John Morrow, M O W, I mean, sorry, M O R R O W, is owns a company called Smart Blogger, and he's just an amazing blogger. And if you actually just look at his blog posts, those are golden examples of how to write a blog post. So you don't have to come up with this stuff on your own. We have tons and tons of samples, our own articles too. Just look at the format there. Um, I was, I'm not quite sure what you mean by workflow. Is it what you start with? Or, so I'm, I'm not 100% clear on that, but I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go that route. I think yep. you, you, you spend a good portion of time, you know, not just five or ten minutes or, you know, like a day or, or more, really thinking about who the prospect is and how can you meet him where he is. You know, you, you have to go to him literally, I mean figuratively. If, if he doesn't know about, if, if this is the first time he's hearing about this company or this service, you have to take that into account. and build up that, that comfort level. If it's an existing customer, you know, you can be more direct and you don't need to do that. So, so you need to think about, you know, what, what is he worried about? What's he excited about? Where is his, his mindset right now? What, or, you know, when he's going to be reading your letter? Do that kind of thinking. Get as familiar with the product as you possibly can. Gene Schwartz, who is a, you know, legendary copywriter, he used to he used to write for Rodale, and they had these you know big books on all different kinds of health, all kinds of different topics. But you know they'd be like 300, 400, 500 page books, and he would go through them seven times, making notes and making notes and making notes. You know the the you're arming yourself with the very best ammunition you can, and the way to do that is by really getting involved. So once you've done that work, once you've really been thinking about what's the most compelling, engaging message that's going to bring them in, you know, then you do whatever, whatever else research you need to do to support that. That, you know, some writers start with the headline and lead and then just go all the way through. Other writers do it more in, in blocks. You know, maybe if they're not quite sure what the headline and lead is going to be yet, they'll start with the 
the order company, you know, the um, the the order now close of the letter because that's somewhat um, standard. Although you always have to tweak, tweak it up a little bit, but you know, but that at least gets them writing. Sometimes people just need to start wherever it is that they can actually start typing and, and flow, and then then the, then the rest of it comes in. We do go through all this in the accelerated program, and, uh, and if you've done the companion series with Rebecca and I, in if you're a member of the Professional Writers Alliance, there's a really great series. There's I don't know maybe eight or ten little videos uh, called First to Final, and I highly recommend that. That the we went to a a level master copywriters and really had them walk through projects where from the time they were assigned it all the way through and you see their process. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, what does it mean to be AWAI certified? How does one become? I was just answering that in typing, but I, we can answer it. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Well, um, once you go through the uh, the accelerated program at the very end, there is a test you can take to become AWAI certified, and it is based on what you've just learned in the accelerated program, which. As I keep saying, that's our flagship, that's the foundational program, that's what's really well known in the industry. So uh, once you're in there, you'll, you'll hear all about it. Okay, I'm going to put the blueprint. Someone's asking, how do you actually get started if you're brand new to this? We have a blueprint. I'm going to put the link oh, yes. on here because it'll, it'll walk you through everything. So what to consider, what to know. Now, where did that go? Oh, here it is, Ashley. Boing. I'm sorry, I can't. I just can't see see the questions right now. I'll read you one, okay? Sure. Um, it seems that writing jobs posted on AWAI writing jobs requires. Oh, at least I two answered two this years. already, Pam. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't. It doesn't. It's not marked that way. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll mark that. Um, got a request for doing a reality blog soon. Not within my direct Exciting. niche. Though, right? Yeah, I know, no kidding, like, woohoo! hoo um, <laughs> It's not within my niche, although it's a great opportunity. How do I combine it or leave it out of my portfolio? Um, uh, I would say any great writing is a great example of your writing, and I don't know if it would turn off someone in a specific niche if you had it included. It would just show depth. So does that help? And <laughs> As far as the best piece of advice, honestly, it's get started. Don't wait. Don't, and you'll, you'll see that all of the experts, when, when you watch the, the replay of, of the webinar, that's what Christina, that's what Candace, that's what Guillermo all really stress. Get started, and you're never going to be done. You're never, and it's never perfect. You're always learning. You're always improving, but you have to just, get started, and that means getting the skills and then coming up with um, a, a plan to start getting clients, and we have so much information available to help you do that. Um, another question is, is it possible to just start as a researcher? I think this would give me a better understanding on how to take research and write good copy. Um, yes, it is possible, and there are some writers that uh, hire, hire researchers just to help them um, with that, that shows how important it is to them. Um, as far as having that help you write good copy, you know, I think you should really just start writing, honestly. I, I think, um, I think the, the two are, are, are separate, but um, but it, it certainly is possible. It, it, they're not all that easy to find, um, but you can, um, you, you definitely can. And it's not just being a researcher for, for writers. You could approach businesses, especially anything in the financial world. They hire full-time researchers to help, help with the, you know, ever-changing, ever-current 
need to know latest information. I'm sure in the health world there's a lot of that. I'm sure, you know, you might just have to dig around a little bit, but I think if you approached it as I want to do research for you to help you have more powerful marking materials, that would be a pretty intriguing message. Okay, I'm seeing, my, my question is blank now. It is, I clear, everything's clear. Oh, um, wow, well, there you I go. Know. In the priority section, everything's clear now. And um, there's just a couple little things in the, uh, the regular Q&A area, but I think we've answered all those as well. So okay. we're at the top of the hour, and um, wow, that was a fast hour of Q and A it's madness. Just, it flew by. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So well, let's do a let's just do a quick last call. If, if if you have any questions for us, now is your time. And if you have any topics that you would like us to cover in a in a full AW, inside AWAI, let us know. That most of the topics that we have covered have come from you, our members things that, that you want to know more about, you want to uh, get more insights and strategies about. So please, you can always send me an email at askkatie, A-S-K-K-A-T-I-E, at awai.com, or Rebecca, askrebecca, at awai.com. Um, you can send us questions, you can send us ideas, Anything that, that will, will help you, we, we'd love to hear from you about. All right, so. Yep. Uh, Jim is looking for job sites that list openings for writers. I'll, I'll give you a few. So flexjobs.com, flex, F-L-E-X, uh, jobs.com is a website that posts a lot of jobs for writers for remote, freelance, part-time. Um, so they're not looking for people um, in-house full-time. And then the other ones are simplyhired.com, where you can just go there and type in the word copywriter and find a gazillion postings. And they run from freelance to full-time. Another one is indeed.com. And then we have one for AWAI members called direct response jobs, plural, jobs.com. Okay, Ingrid is thanking us. You're <laughs> welcome. Well, she said we gave her a boost, so that's, that's hey, our hey. job done. Excellent. And Anne is also uh, offering guru.com as another place. Oh, guru? Okay, cool. Well, we're so glad everybody was with us. Um, this was fun. We're, we'll definitely do this again. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to uh, Guillermo, Christina, and Candace as well. We really appreciate you taking time out of your busy days to be here and help your fellow members paying it forward. Uh, thank you, Pam. Thank you, Katie, and all of our guests and attendees. And we look forward to an awesome next year with you guys. If you have any questions uh, or ideas for Inside AWI, please definitely email me at askrebecca at awai.com. Um, and we will put together a, a webinar. If there's anything that we can do to help, like I said, you can count us in. All of the ideas for our sessions come from what you need. So if there's something that we can help with, let me know, and we will put together a good session for you. All right, everybody, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.